Welcome to a new video on my channel and uh, today I wanted to give you an update on a Merklin CAN bus uh, project that I've been working on for over a year and to be honest I haven't really done much in the last year but I managed to make some progress and I've already managed to fulfill my initial goal uh, which is already working uh, and I wanted to do some more stuff on it, but actually I've, I managed to run into some bottlenecks. Uh, um, well, bottlenecks really is just my lack of understanding how the Merklin system works and especially how the control box works with, uh, you know, with, the, with the mobile stations that are connected to it. So the, in the setup, what I have here is I have a con micro Merklin control box. This is one of the new ones that are supplied with the black uh, mobile station 2. And I have two mobile stations. The black mobile station is connected to the control box over here. The control box also has two wires going out and it goes into this microcontroller setup here, which is reading the CAN bus on this microcontroller. And that is something that I can also see on the left side of the screen. So this is the web interface for this microcontroller. And I can see all the different CAN bus messages going back and forth on the on the bus so whenever I do something here so for example if I change the switch I can see these messages appearing here so that's one thing and what I also have here is I have the second uh, mobile station uh, this one the gray one and it is connected to this socket here where it still receives the power from the control box but the data the CAN bus data is actually coming from this second microcontroller and the two microcontrollers talk to each other over Wi-Fi. So the idea was that I wanted to make a truly wireless mobile station that it, where it is not connected to the, to the control box physically. So my idea was that the mobile station is connected to the microcontroller which then transmits the CAN bus messages over uh, internet or, or over Wi-Fi to the second one which then puts the CAN bus messages back to the control box. Uh, so that was the thing that I wanted to do. My original idea was that I have the mobile station that I'm going to use to control my locos and I wanted to have a separate physical box where I can control my points. So this is why I built the first microcontroller so I this microcontroller can put the CAN bus messages to control the points and um, that can you know have a physical interface or something like that and I've already managed to do that because if you look at this uh, screen here let me make this full screen and I have a couple of test buttons here and I can change point one and point two and if I do that you can see that the point changes so with this microcontroller I can send the exact messages to the CAN bus which the mobile station would send in order to change the points. So I can change point number one, I can also change point number two. And this is working, this is working great. And so that, this is something that I definitely want to implement fully. I mean this is just a test setup at the moment. The thing is what is not working is the, you know, the wireless mobile station. And actually, it is working to some extent. I have to show you this one. So, as I said, the gray one is not connected directly to the control box. So, the messages that it receives, it receives via the Wi-Fi over the two microcontrollers. And if I change the points here on the black one, then we can see that the point also changes here. So, actually, the message, the CAN bus message goes from the first well, from the black mobile station to the control box. From the con oops, sorry, from the control box it goes to the first microcontroller, then it transfers it over to the second microcontroller over Wi-Fi, and then it finally arrives here. And if I do this for the other one, it's a little bit out of sync. So I'm not saying this is you know a really good and reliable connection, and there is a considerable delay, but it is working to some extent. But this setup is only working because I have the first mobile station physically connected to the control box. So I think what is happening is that the connection box or the control box somehow checks what is connected to it physically. And I'm thinking that maybe, let me just go back to my screen. So I'm thinking that maybe it can do this by 
you know, looking at the various pins on this 10 pin connector, because if I look at the documentation, I can see that there are separate pins for master and slave uh, power and ground. So what I'm thinking that maybe it's checking what is connected based on, you know, maybe power consumption, because if I don't connect this uh, uh, black mobile station to the control box, then the second one uh, cannot come online. So it would it would start up, it would boot, but uh, it would come into stop mode and I can't unstop it. And I can see the messages going back and forth between the two units. So the control box is, is not going out of the stop mode unless I connect one device physically. And I'm thinking that probably this the reason behind this, because this is how the control box knows who is the slave and the master, because based on my experience, whatever device gets connected first becomes the slave and the second one becomes the master. So it needs to physically detect one of the, well, something connected to either of the, the two ports. And I think probably this is the reason why I can't really do any control from the second controller because the control book doesn't understand where these messages are coming from since there is already one master connected to it so this could be this should be a slave controller and probably the slave controller has a different set of messages because if i keep pressing the buttons uh, probably you can see on the screens that i'm actually getting messages so this is the the thing on the right is the one which is connected to the uh, the gray unit so if I press a button, we can see that, oh, that was a little bit too fast. So we can see that there is a CAN bus message. Uh, so that was the CAN bus message, which was sent by the mobile station. When I clicked that, uh, the, the turn button or the point motor button, and then that was sent over TCP. And then this device received it over the Wi-Fi and it put it into the CAN bus. So the, the communication is working one way and I'm pretty sure the setup is correct in a way that you know the data flow and the data conversion and the Wi-Fi connection and everything is working. It just you know something in the message structure or the way I'm sending the messages is not uh, correct because as long as I'm only have because if I have one only one unit connected and if I sending if I'm sending the messages externally from this microcontroller that those are ex uh, accepted and if i make any changes to on this unit then the changes get reflected on the second unit as well so honestly even with the progress that i have made so far and the fact that i can control the points externally without the mobile station is good enough for me but ideally i would have liked if i could just create a truly wireless mobile station that i can just go around run the layout and it's not connected to anything using wires and technically i could you know connect this microcontroller using a 10 point socket and then just have a battery pack which is going to power the whole thing for you know a couple of hours that would be good enough for me of course it's going to be a you know fairly chunky a piece mostly because of the wires but hey ho this is uh, what you can do i mean to be honest i like to have a physical controller instead of a mobile phone and an app and this is why I'm you know, working on this project in the first place. But that's the project so far. Uh, if you have any ideas how I can, I don't know, fool the connection box that something is connected to it, or how the messages of the two controllers are different from each other, well, let me know in the comment section and, and maybe I would be able to modify the code so it can you know, differentiate between the two units or I can, you know, send codes that would act like uh, codes from a slave unit, something like that. Because if I have, if I need a workaround where one of the controllers is physically connected to the control box and the other one becomes wireless, I think that would be still a good enough uh, solution for me. So, yeah, that will be in the next one. So, thanks for watching, and hopefully see you in the next video.